Yeah, the film stars uh, Roy Schneider as your local small town sheriff, and one day the town gets attacked by sharks. So he brings in expert Richard Dreyfus, who um, comes in and you know is the expert guy. I realized how fucking stupid that <laughs> sentence sounded. <laughs> fuck me to hell. Can we God just restart? Yeah, let's fuck it. Just you know what? Mm. At least we'll have good bloopers. <laughs> Oh my god, and we haven't been drinking. <laughs> Could you fucking imagine? God. I think if we were drinking, we'd be able to keep, <laughs> keep it going off more. <laughs> oh god, my throat. <laughs> Don't die over there, Jesus. <laughs> oh god, I have the giggles. Help me, I, help me, I have the giggles. <laughs> Oh my god. Ha ha. I think I'm. Wow, we can focus for whole, a ten, 10 whole seconds. I, I know. Ha. Huh. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, me. What is, I don't know what's up with my mouth. What's now. wrong? I don't fucking know. I'm finding everything hilarious. That's what's wrong. <laughs> Did you get drunk off of me talking? <laughs> no. Maybe. I don't know. I'm both uh. insulted and touched. <sighs> okay. Alright. Warning. We are about to spoil the movie Jaws. If you haven't seen Jaws, then go ahead and watch it. And if not, then come stay along with us. Thank you. Cameron, we're being attacked by a shark! Oh god, I'll get the music! <laughs> Why?! Hello, everybody, and welcome again to Cinema Roulette. Oh. oh God damn it. Fuck! I don't know my brain broke. Fuck! <laughs> God! Anyway, welcome back. We're here, and we just watch another movie, of course, or else we wouldn't be here. Well, sometimes we watch a TV show. Sometimes that's true, but we just watch the movie, and that movie, we'll just dive right into it, is the ever-famous Jaws. Now, this is one movie that Justin has not seen and I have seen. So this was very interesting. Like, I, I'm just going to say right now, I love this movie. But uh, before we get into our actual review and stuff, we will um, talk about the plot, which is pretty damn simple, actually. Yeah, this plot doesn't take up too much time to explain, honestly. Yeah. Which, which was kind of a part that surprised me about the film is all that happens... Bleh. If I can words without stuttering like Christopher Walken. You're good, man. <laughs> All that really happens is uh, there's a small town on the 4th of July. It's a beachside town, and everyone comes there, there to celebrate and go in the water. But then shark attacks start to happen. Police ma- and says, get rid of the shark. Mayor is like, let's make money. So... But then more people die. So they go get rid of the shark. They kill the shark. End of movie. Yeah, pretty much. It's a simple setup that, you know, it, 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 it's, I, and that's why I love it. Like, you know, it, it's not it's not a difficult setup to follow. It's just like you you have a small town. You have a shark that's attacking small, small ta- said town. Go out. Kill it. Boom. Go on adventure. God, are, so. we are not drunk. <laughs> no, I swear we are not drunk. So, hey, we're drunk on life. No one will get that reference. Okay. Um, no one will. No one will understand the pain. But, Just like uh, me in my high school years. No one understands. No one understands. But, um, yeah, so um, this movie, of course, has a great cast. We have um, Roy Schneider as the sheriff. We have Richard Dreyfus as the shark ex- expert. And Robert Shaw as the badass, you know, hunter guy who goes out and helps him kill the shark. So And is totally not based off of Moby Dick. Totally not based off of Moby Dick in any way at all. So, and... But yeah, so yeah, I, I think honestly that's that's it for the plot. So let's get right into what we thought in the movie. That's it. Uh, what to start with, Ben? Um, 
Well, shit. I mean, let's get the music out of the way because obviously, like one of the most iconic movie scores of all time, has the Jaws instantly recognizable there. So still, yeah, the Jaws thing. theme was really great. Yeah. It still is. It's still a good theme, you know. Every and it's like a liet motive for the shark because every time you hear the dun 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 dun, you know it's near. So yeah, it's like the, uh, Jason's <sighs> exactly. So. Yeah, the the uh, yeah, of course, John Williams legend score is great. And goddamn, the, the Foley guy needs props because the sound design was equally effective. Uh, wait, are we not going to mention the oddly whimsical music at times? I mean, I, I, we were gonna, I was going to delve into that later. But yeah, so um, there, there are times that get kind of awkward when they're out near on the, the water. Near the film's climax, mostly. Near, yeah, near the film's climax. Like, there's one scene where it's like, it gets a little whimsy. It's like, okay. But there's another scene where they're chasing the shark and it, the music gets super whimsical for no reason. It's like, we're out here hunting a shark. Yeah, it's like, we're hunting a shark. It's damaged our boat. We're start. We're taking on water. Whimsy. Ah, so, yeah, that was a little bit out of place at times. And I was just like, really did to tune down the whimsy, John Williams. Come on. I know. I know. John. I get and it. Then the brass goes even louder. Yeah, right. <laughs> There's one point where I got even more whimsical. And I was like, I said less whimsical. Sorry. Can't hear you over me being whimsical. Oh, that whimsical moment when you chase a child murdering shark. Yeah, right? <laughs> Uplifting. Speaking of which, that's a great segue. PG rating bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Even for the time, this was... That's a... Anything else is a lie. Even for the time you broke up, what? <laughs> oh, my internet's going dumb. There okay. Right. Even for the time, this was an R. Yeah, that's why I said even for the time, because like I'm gonna point to the one scene where they he fucking ate the kid and it just he just disappears under the water and looks like a fucking wood chipper. It's just like fuck. <laughs> yeah, there there's dis there's people like cut to bits. There is an actual picture of a shark attack. Yeah, very fucking graphic picture of a shark attack. But yeah, it's black and white, sure, but still, fuck off. <laughs> yeah, actually, like the gore in this is great. It's like ridiculous. It's like, yeah, I don't know how this got a PG, <laughs> but. Yeah, the part who the, says we need a PG thirteen rating? Oh, come on, yeah, that clearly wasn't called for. Yeah, when he fucking bites in his stomach, he just vomits blood. He's like, Argh. I'm just like, God damn. <laughs> oh no, not Moby Dick. I know, not, not fuck. No, Moby Dick was the whale. I think it was uh, uh Shh. I forget the actual name. Oh, 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 Shh. oh, oh okay. fucking nerd. Uh. <laughs> but uh. Yeah, so that was fantastic, and of course it's an it's a horror movie, so you gotta have gore. But come on, <laughs> and then uh, yeah, so that was good, and the fucking um, and then too, let's let's talk about the cinematography too, because it was gorgeous in this film. Well, actually, wait, let's quickly go back to the Foley guy because I kind of cut you off. Oh, you're good. Yeah, go. We'll talk about the Foley guy first. Yeah, because okay, for those who don't know, Foley is basically any background sound. Cars going by, footsteps, nails on chalkboard, that stuff. Yeah. And in it, except for the chomping noises of the shark near the is really good. Yeah, the sound design is super effective. <laughs> Jaws uses sound design. It's super effective. <laughs> right. Yeah, just the sounds of, like, the water and everything. And you mentioned one thing where um, Richard Dreyfuss' character, he was underwater, and, like, he, he saw, like, a severed head and an obvious jump scare, and he screamed, and the scream just sounded... We were like, how did the sound guy do that? Yeah, it sounds like a little girl scream that turns into a dog whistle? I don't know. Yeah, it was just... It's just like, okay. <laughs> yeah, is. Or uh, the nails on the chalkboard, because I was listening through earbuds. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I had the sound cranked up, and when, uh, oh, I'm trying to think of Quint. the character's name. Quint. Quint, thank you. I was like, it's an obvious sailor name. Come on. Yeah, Quint. When Quint takes his nails across the chalkboard, I was just like, oh, fuck. Come on, guys. <laughs> right? Yeah, he's introduced because everyone's in a panic and everything. He's introduced just scratching up the chalkboard. He's like, ah. <laughs> And uh, going with both, there's uh, the scene where they're all drunk on the boat, talking to each other, having a good time before it gets really dark for no other reason than to make Quinn a bit more likable. Mm -hmm. 
And I realized something that isn't done in nowadays movies, hmm. which seems to be all that ever happens when we watch a film that's slightly older. Right. <laughs> is like we have stuff like Avengers, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, whatever. And they have, mo- or Suicide Squad, there's moments like this where the characters sit around and you get them to like each other, or to at least get to know them a bit better. Uh-huh. But in this one, there's no music. Mm-hmm. There's nothing really saying how to feel, it's just them kind of drunkenly laughing at each other as they point out where they got scarred. Yeah. Yeah, and I know, like, some of the whimsical music is a little outplaced in this film, but, like, when it gets to the serious, like, character-building moments, like, there there was no music in that scene. It was just them laughing, and then... <laughs> well, that wasn't even a serious moment. It's just a moment to kind yeah. of calm down, feel, feel like these people are human. Exactly. <laughs> they sit around, get drunk, and have a good time and sing a little song before getting back to the action. Well, until Quinn has to tell the dark, true story of a fleet in world war ii that was trapped in the middle of ocean and like how much was it 316 survived out of a thousand one hundred eleven hundred men yeah i think it was the uss indianapolis or something like that yeah and all all those men were eaten by sharks and it kind of comes out of left field like the santa story in gremlins yeah i don't well <laughs> We'll talk about that. What? Not, nothing. I just, I, I haven't seen Gremlins yet. So just throwing that out there for all you. Oh guys. shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyone who is quickly yelling at me that I hadn't seen Cameron has not seen Gremlins or Nightmare Before Christmas. That so is you can yell one. at me for that. Nightmare Before Christmas is a big one. So you can go ahead and do that. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Quinn tells this story and it, yeah, it gets really dark. And again, like there's hardly any music during, I think there's like a little bit towards the end, but he's just sitting there talking and you're just like, fuck (laughs) yeah yeah and there is a little bit of music that plays not overblown where it's like you should feel something it's just like this sort of like someone scraping on a violin yeah yeah no and that's the thing like a lot of times like it's movies telling you how to feel instead of letting a scene or the visuals Actually or the actors out. or the actors letting them play out and let and doing a scene and then letting the audience decide how it feels against that. It's it just feels it's more natural and more like that. But you don't really get that anymore. So, yeah, it's odd. Yeah. But yeah, it, it's it, it's something that's sorely missing and lacking in Hollywood movies. But <laughs> uh, then next we're going to say visuals, which yeah. fuck. God damn, Steven Spielberg loves his fucking sunsets and sunrises. Yeah, he does. There's a lot of that in this movie, and it is gorgeous. <laughs> Just anytime there's a sunset or a sunrise, a character is silhouette in front of it. Yeah, there's a lot of dark silhouettes. And it's like, I, I know you have a fetish for that and for spotlights, but like, god damn, is it gorgeous. <laughs> god damn, you're... God damn, it looks good. It looks so good. Yeah. And yeah, that, that, yeah. So the visuals, cinematography is gorgeous and the editing too is really good. Like a lot of the transitions and cuts, how they cut back and forth. (laughs) Also, I know in the, like, Back to the Future, the joke is made, no, Back to the Future Part 2, the joke is made that the shark still looks fake even then. Mm -hmm. Like, even the future as a jab at the original. And it's like, it doesn't look that fake because it's never on screen long enough for you to really look at it. No, exactly, exactly. Like, the shark really doesn't look fake. Like, it might have in some of, like, the shitty sequels, obviously. But, like, in the original film, it's... What do you mean? Jaws 3D was perfect. Oh, God. <laughs> now I can think of it as that one scene where it just comes up to, like, the fucking glass. just like... <laughs> the glass just... <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, so... One of the most intent... Un- well, yeah, unintentionally hilarious bad scenes in the movie. Come on. Come on, fuck you. Um, Best ad for SeaWorld I've ever yeah, seen. Right? <laughs> Come to SeaWorld. You'll get eaten by a fucking man-eating shark. <laughs> no, don't worry. We have whales that do that. Oh, yeah. Sure, we have orcas. Don't worry. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, freaking... Uh, yeah, I don't know. And I, I'm going to probably, like, I know towards the end, too, I'm going to throw some facts out there. But the fact about this is, like, and this is well known, I know, but a lot of times the mechanical shark had broken down either due to, like, seawater or faulty parts. So it forced yeah. Steven Spielberg to show less of the shark and use more, like, objects, like the barrels coming towards him representing the shark and stuff like that. 
Yeah, or the camera under the water. Yeah, or the point of view of the shark. So, And Sp- Steven Spielberg himself admitted that he was very happy that it turned out that way because it made it more... He, I think his quote was something like, it made me more like Alfred Hitchcock instead of Ray Harryhausen or something like that. Fair. <laughs> but yeah, so that's good. The way it's told is good. But yeah, it's just... It is, it yeah, is, the paint... Even though it's a simple story, it somehow keeps you Aaron Kane for all like two hours of it. It does, yeah. It's a it's a two hour movie, so but yeah, it does keep you entertained. Like, and I love too. Like, like, and, and we'll we'll tell a little bit too into like about the uh, the dialogue, like how it seemed like natural, but it was bordering on the unnatural. <laughs> okay, first person to count how many times Cameron just said like when something I don't know what yet, but something like throughout the whole episode or just in that sentence. Just then. Okay. <laughs> Map it out. We'll we'll send you something. Not sure. Uh, yeah, it's a lie. Um, also, sorry if my nose is a little stuffy. I have a little bit of a sickness again. Always getting sick. Just trying to avoid our love, our podcast. Oh, oh God. I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Think of the baby. <laughs> oh, God. I shouldn't have intentionally infected myself with the virus. <laughs> Where were we going? <laughs> I don't fucking know. The dialogue. I know. Okay, getting back. Yeah. <laughs> well, near... When it got uh, past the halfway point, it got back to being natural. But at the beginning... The... Hold on. Wait, say that I... again. You broke up majorly. I hate this so You said at wild. the beginning, and then just it cut you off. <laughs> Okay, uh, also, if anyone's wondering why don't we just record two separate ways, for some reason when I record on my end, even if I'm wearing headphones, it picks up what my computer is playing. Yeah, so there was some technical issues we have yet to work out. Yeah, so, sorry, we have to deal with what the internet does. Sorry, Goober. (laughs) Poor Goober. I know. First, he was a Nestle candy, and now he's just a viewer. (laughs) R.I.P. Goober. Um... (laughs) Uh, but still, the <coughs> before the half fucking rude. Sorry. Okay, <laughs> before the halfway point of the movie, the dialogue is very odd in the way of it's almost natural, but the pauses and the way the actors say it feels wrong slightly. Mm-hmm. I don't even really know how to put it into words. It's almost twin. I wouldn't want to say Twin Peaks. Yeah, I'm not trying. really. Not that level of, like, weirdness. Twin Peaks Very Light edition. Yeah, yeah Twin Peaks Light. <laughs> Hold on. I gotta, yeah. I'm going to mute my mic and you can go on. I have to clear my throat. Okay, good for you. I don't know where else to go. Uh, but later on in the film, it does get more natural. And the way all the actors bounce off each other when they're on the boat is a lot of fun. Also, the humor in the film is just... I can't fucking words. I'm trying to like think ahead of what I'm saying. Uh, The comedy is honestly super on point. Anytime there's a joke, it pretty much lands. Yeah, it hits. There's some really good humor in it. So, (laughs) like fucking Richard. You're all gonna die. (laughs) He's fucking. There's a bunch of sailors on the land, and like uh, Roy Schneider tells him to get them off the boat. He's like, get off the boat. And they're like, ah, yeah, whatever. Shove off. He's another bitch. He's like, (laughs) they're all gonna die. (laughs) uh the only bad actors were probably the kids i'll be honest yeah there were a couple times where i was like okay no (laughs) like at the beginning i cut my hand yeah you seem so fucking (laughs) proud of that yeah like he comes in smiling like i cut my hand it's like okay that would not be your reaction kid come on yeah it was like from the top of his palm to the (laughs) bottoms it's okay it's just gore effects from movies (laughs) It's okay, it's not even the good blood, it's this high pitch High pitched? I I um <laughs> I can't think of it I can't think of the word. I, Justin's brain has flat I know what you mean high, Oh yes, this blood sounds high pitched, man, Jesus. High um high something. I, think it, I, I know what you meant. I think I'm trying to think of the word hue. <laughs> it's the word Like high contrast? Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Very neon there. <laughs> Very fucking <neon>. word. <laughs> All right, can we put a drunk warning at the beginning of this episode, even though we haven't <laughs> anything? Just so you know, we have not touched one thing of alcohol. Just so you know. 
and yet we well, see tonight, tonight at mean. least. But, but so we we may seem super drunk, but we're not actually drunk. But we must be drunk on life. So, fuck, man. Um, <laughs> you all right, buddy? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> This is gonna be a weird episode, man. This is this is just like two dr- two idiots <laughs> rambling about Jaws. We should show each other our tattoos. Uh, here's one. It says "Mom," but upside down. <laughs> but upside down. So it says "Wow." Yes. <laughs> what the fuck are we? <laughs> There's no punchline there. It's just yes. <laughs> oh my god! This is the best episode ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this is fucking awesome. This is ridiculous. Okay, so. <laughs> Technical difficulty, something. <laughs> <laughs> Where the fuck do we go with this? I don't know. I don't. Oh, <laughs> uh, I could go into problems. Because okay. it kind of falls into the category of. It's a summer. It was the first summer blockbuster, right? That's what most people agree on. Yeah, it was basically the first movie to be the first "quote unquote" summer blockbuster, and you, the, which it means it was the first one to be like aggressively marketed and released in a lot in a lot more theaters than would be would have been released at the time. It was the first one to have a super wide release. So, and since it, I'm not sure if it was purposely made for more of a general, but. Since I kind of feel it was, since they're, you know, first blockbuster, bunch of marketing behind it, Mm -hmm. it wasn't too scary. Like, I can see how a general audience finds it scary, but I grew up, since I've been, since I was 10, I've been watching horror movies, like classic slashers and all that. Yeah, same, so. (laughs) Yeah, so me, the the movie isn't scary. It's still a fun ride, it's just... There's no moments where I'm like, oh, my God, I will never go in the water or something. like No, that. exactly. And like, obviously, like it was a super wide release and like a lot of audiences, I guess, weren't used to that. I mean, I know there were horror films released at that time, but because wait a minute, Halloween, what was that? Seventy eight. That was like late 70s because the slasher craze hit in the 80s. Yeah, actually, what horror films were around at the time? I don't even know if there were many big ones, were there? Well, there were horror movies, but I don't think slashers had started yet, and it was mainly it was mainly monster movies. Uh, There were the Hammer film. Oh yeah, the Hammer horror ones from the fifties. Yeah, Hammer was out. There were probably remakes upon remakes of those. Yeah, well, the thing is, those were more released in like the UK. Like they were released in America, but not like to a super wide audience like this. So I mean, I guess horror. This is the first. We just went over this is first blockbuster, so no movie was released. No, exactly. Well, and that's the thing. Like, this was, I guess, I guess we have to put more in the context of the time because there weren't any like big horror movies released at that time, really. So, yeah. And I also, think... since this is PG, kids were probably seeing. Yeah, this. you know, for kids. <laughs> as a kid, yeah, this would scare the fucking shit out of me. Yeah. But as a mature nineteen-year-old adult, it does not. No. <laughs> Yeah, and like it, it's like I can see like because it's it's it, it is suspenseful at times, but there were no like shit your pants like oh my god this is so scary moments. So yeah, like uh the first moment at the beach before the kid is in when uh the sheriff is looking out across the water. Mm-hmm. I was actually super tense, and I feel it didn't pay off enough. Mm. Like you see the kid getting eaten, but I think there could have been a, a loud punch. Yeah. To see. Yeah, that's the thing. There's, like, a scene where he's on the beach, and, like, it's a very, very tense scene where, like, he's nervously looking at the water, and people can Because we just around. heard about the first shark attack that happened. Yeah, and it's a really tense scene, and the kids get eaten, yeah, and which there was, like, a big shocking moment, but there wasn't, like, I don't, it, there might not have been, like, enough punch to it. <laughs> yeah, there could... Like, they could have had the sound go to just a high-pitched squee as he focuses on the kid being eaten or something. yeah. And that moment does result in one of the most famous Zali moves where the camera, like, you know, where it zooms in and like the background gets all weird. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so, and then, but yeah, there could have been a little more payoff, but yeah, we'll, we'll go into, were there any other problems you had with it? Uh, you got cut for me, so I don't know. What oh, you sorry. Said. Were there any other problems you had with it? Um, not really pro This isn't a, problem more of a nitpick there were a lot of one takes i know spielberg likes them but mm. still it was just like 
there's a one take there's a one take okay we're showing off now yeah it's like yeah because the first the first one where they're like they, they get on like the boat and it slowly pulls away as they're talking i'm like okay that's really cool and he does another one take i'm like okay that's cool but okay another one take god damn it spielberg <laughs> okay i know extras are expensive but come on <laughs> You can cut a, we we get it. You you showed us off enough. Just just cut here. Cut here. There you go. <laughs> go or uh the scene in near the oh, near the start of the final act. It's like the shark's in the pond. Wait, how is it a pond if it's connected to the ocean? <laughs> it's not a pond. It's not a pond is simply Someone the... will probably say I'm wrong there. <laughs> how? It, it's a little cut in like to the ocean. Yeah, but someone's going to be like, actually, the definition of pun is... Fuck off. <laughs> what you are thinking of is a lake. <laughs> oh, my God. But, yeah. So, yeah, and like I say, it's just, it's a good, fun event. It's not really much horror as it is, like, adventure and tenseness. Like, because, like, once they get on the boat and start hunting, it's more of, like, this grand sense of, like, adventure and camaraderie between the characters. I don't see grand adventure, but yes. Well, adventure. not not grand adventure. I, I that's a little overplaying it, but yeah, just it, it's an adventure basically. An adventure to kill a sh- to kill a shark. <laughs> so yeah, and Robert also don't put too much logic in your brain when you watch this movie. Or watch it. No, that's not how that works. Yeah, there, there's there's quite there's quite a few continuity errors, and there's some logic leaps where it's like I no duh that would have happened if you did that, but it's it's just a, it's a good movie to just turn your brain off and let's like well, let's go kill a shark. <laughs> like yes, shark. Uh, the shark goes and attacks a bunch of people at the beach, except with that many people, it would know that's not seals and would run away. Yeah, right. Like there's some like working. Yeah, or like yeah, we're uh, I'm gonna go hunt a shark. Let me put on a scuba go- gear and dive into the waters where I just said it hunts mostly at night. <laughs> yeah. Oh, let me. Oh, I need to go examine the boat, even though. If they brought it to land, wouldn't the tooth have stayed in there and they yeah, wouldn't have been better? <laughs> exactly. So it, it's stuff like that. So it's like, it, it, it's one of those things where just, just don't think. So. <laughs> yeah. Or when Hooper totally goes and hides like a bitch at the end. I of know. The- <laughs> Like there's a scene, and I, I'm gonna like as I, I think I'm gonna once we once we're like at the end here, I'll I'll say some facts too. But yeah, Hooper fucking he goes into a cage, try and like stab the shark in the mouth with this like uh, with a uh, poison. Uh, I think he said it was nitrate. Yeah, poison nitrate. Yeah, which will kill the shark. And the shark, of course, is too powerful, eats the cage, and he swims down and just hides like a bitch until fucking uh, Brody kills it. <laughs> oh no! The cage we were able to snap together is easily shark that was able to tear up a dock wow shocker <laughs> you know we're supposed to weld these things together right yeah. you don't just like slap some rope on it you weld it you morons <laughs> i mean i understand why he ran away but once the shark started attacking the boat he could have swam got tried to stab it yeah exactly <laughs> Because the shark was on the edge of the boat trying to eat Quinn for a good couple of minutes, at mm-hmm. least. It was just standing up there, so he could have easily gotten it and stabbed it then. Yeah, exactly. But but no, we needed the badass line and explosions. Yeah, we needed the badass line of, smile, you son of a bitch, boom. It's like, yeah. <laughs> Actually, the sheriff's fear of water doesn't really come in to the film that much does it, it doesn't really like he gets used to it pretty quickly like he's on like there is a little bit later where like he says like go go on the little edge of things so i can get a like uh, a shot in the foreground for size comparison he's like no i'm not gonna go out there but yeah really he gets over it pretty well fast, that's more so. because there's a giant fucking white shark yeah. out there which that's fair that's fair but yeah he gets over it pretty damn quickly <laughs> yeah there's the one scene where he has to be super wasted to get on the boat and that's about it yeah, he, he gets over it pretty fast, which, I mean, it, I mean it's fine. I, I guess it's good that they didn't dwell on it, but... <laughs> but it also becomes more pointless if you don't bring it up at all. Exactly, if it just gets dropped by the last part of the movie, so... <laughs> you know, the climax of the thing we've been building to. Oh, yeah, I'm on the boat. It's I'm fine. on the boat, it's fine. I'm good. I'm gonna be a badass now. <laughs> I guess it's brought up again when they're hanging back to Lane. He's like, oh, thank God. That's about it. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. Yeah. And the last line too is like, um, uh, 
man, I hate the water. <laughs> I can hardly see. I can't, can't see imagine it. why. Can't imagine why. <laughs> yeah, like I said, there's some good lines in this, and the humor's great. So, um, but yeah, so I don't know. There, this will be another short episode, like Precinct Thirteen. There really isn't much else to talk about here. Why are classic movies so easy to talk about? I know, right? Goodness. <laughs> But yeah. well, I guess we've kind of chosen ones where the plots haven't been too complex. That's true. We've chosen ones with very simple plots. Like, it's all in Precinct 13. There's, like, it's, like, gangsters want revenge, shoot at, and shoot out the precinct to survive. And then Joss is like, there's a shark attack and people go kill it. <laughs> the death scenes were fine enough for knowing the budget and having to shoot in fucking water. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll get into some of the facts here, too. Like, Steven Spielberg, he chose to film actually on the ocean. Um, which, like, obviously he could have done it cheaper, but he wanted to actually capture the feel of, like, being out there. So, and like you said, they were at times close to land, so it was very difficult to shoot scenes where the land was out of the shot. <laughs> yeah. Like, and it was fine towards the end, like, where we're like, oh, we're going to head back closer to the land. So, which, one, makes it, so we can show the land, and two, makes it easier for them, makes it more believable for them to swim back to shore. <laughs> Even though that they said there could be other sharks in these waters, but... Yeah. It's like they get to the land. Oh, thank God. Shark comes up. Rum. <laughs> uh, it's like, damn it. Yeah. I can't make that reference. Cause I don't re- remember the name of the movie. Mm. Might be deep blue. Where Samuel L. Jackson gets eaten by shark. Yes. Yeah. That's it. Deep blue. I think. Yeah, I was right. Yeah. Shut up. Xbox. <laughs> boop, boop. But yeah, this this movie was infamously plagued by a lot of production problems um, because like there were the, the shoot itself went like super over budget and super um, like it went over budget and over the allotted time. Like I was obviously shooting on the ocean presented a lot of problems to them. So the production crew actually nicknamed the film flaws because of how many trouble, how much trouble <laughs> they got into during the shooting. So it was an infamously like hard shoot. And I think it was like, it was only scheduled for so long, but he went like a hundred days over or something like that. Ooh, Jesus. Yeah. And like he said, um, he said like nobody had ever done, he said that like, he thought that was going to be the end of him. Spiel- in an interview, Spielberg said like, I thought that was going to be like the end of me. Cause no one had ever gone a hundred days over time. So he thought it would be basically the end of his career. And another fun fact, Spielberg himself, he actually, he did not show up for the last day of shooting because he was paranoid that the crew would just throw him in the water and drive off without him. <laughs> and, and of course the film ended up being a success. So to this day, he has a superstition where he will never show up on set for the last day of filming. Really? Yeah. Huh? Uh, well, Cameron, I really want to try something. Uh-huh. Uh, it's superstition. I want to write and direct a movie, but never. Sh- but never what? Never show up on set any of the days. Aha, uh-huh. that'll turn if out well. If the film does well. <laughs> if Actually, wait, well. wouldn't that just say I'm a shit director? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> uh. But yeah, oh yeah, I found the quote here. Yeah, Spielberg reflecting on the protected shoot said, I thought my career as a filmmaker was over. I heard rumors that I would never work again because no one had ever taken a film 100 days of over schedule. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's like a, a week, two weeks, fucking 100 days. Yeah, exactly. So, but thankfully it made up in spades with the aggressive marketing and it ended up being one of the most, bi- one of the biggest financial successes of all time. And it basically started the whole uh, blockbuster craze. So... It uh, totally ruined Hollywood. Oh, yeah. It ruined the auteur method, you know, where the filmmakers were. <laughs> God. Where every, every film you make has to be somewhat the same. I know. God, yeah. And I, we'll probably talk about this because uh, should we say that like we're planning on doing like part episodes where we just talk on a subject? Oh, uh, yeah. The topic wheel. Yeah. There's going to be a topic wheel. We're going to throw that out there now where we like we just talk about like subjects like and I think that'll probably be one of them where like how stupid we th- both think the auteur method is. That is I I honestly had to like I learned it in film class mm-hmm. and then I had to watch a couple of videos re-explain it so I could 100% get down what it actually was. Mm-hmm. And it's just like that's stupid. <laughs> right. Uh, Why would you? I mean, it's fine to have a style, but still, like being forced to keep it the same and be in control of absolutely everything on film. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you need to let people breathe. When people breathe, what? Well, you need to let people breathe, as in, like, films are done by huge groups of people—actors, yeah, 
actors, cameramen, whatever, you need everyone involved thinking creatively as well. Exactly. Like, you can't make a movie on your own. You just can't. It's, it's... Well, unless you're freaking Robert Rodriguez. Unless you're Robert Rodriguez, but he's Robert Rodriguez. <laughs> Come on. That's fair. But yeah, so, um, yeah, overall, I think, yeah, good film. So. <laughs> yeah, I enjoy it. I... I'm trying to think of what to say, because I don't think it's bad in any way. Yeah, it's just not as good as everyone probably hyped it up to be. Well, no, not even that. It was it was a very enjoyable movie. Mm-hmm. Just, it's not, um... I, I know this is, like, duh, but it's not perfect, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Would be a way to say it. Or it's not really a film where I'm going to constantly be like, oh, yeah, Jaws. Jaws is a... Draws just fantastic. Then talk on about it for twenty minutes. Exactly. So we we hardly got to talk about it for forty. <laughs> oh, you're really for shit. <laughs> Apologies. For a short episode. Yeah. You or know, like... Maybe you're thankful to stop hearing us fucking talk. <laughs> wow, that just got depressing all of a sudden. Hey, it's just like that moment in Jobs. Oh. <laughs> Uh, and uh, don't worry about the gremlin spoiler earlier. Trust me. Trust you what? Trust me about the gremlins line. Uh-huh. That comes right out of nowhere. It just you comes will right the it. fuck out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. Goody. It, it completely breaks the flow of the movie when it happens. <laughs> like, what, does he just go it, on a long monologue about it? I won't spoil it, but oh. it's it's fun. All right. But yeah, so they even, par- they even parody it in uh, Grown Two actually. Oh, really? Kind of spoil this. Oh my god. Where uh, uh, one the character that brings it up starts talking about the Easter bite, and the main character guy just yeah, we'll talk about this later. Let's just go. <laughs> That's great. Um, so I think it's time to spin the wheel. All right. Well, unless we got more to say. Well, I'm saying we are we do movie TV show, right? So we have Gravity Falls. Oh no, we have to do the next film after Gravity Falls. Okay, yeah. Yep. Time to spin the wheel. Yeah, that's what we're spinning. All right. Jeez, ruining what the next episode is, even though they should already know from the previous episode. Yes. God. Which, uh, before we spin, I know we jokingly said at the end of um. At the end of Angel Beats, that if we cut out or anything, that means we faked it. The sigh I give of, oh, thank God, was 100% real. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so thank you so much for watching Cinema Roulette. Stay tuned, and we'll see you next time. Oh, thank Christ. Because <laughs> <laughs> what we were going to do, what I oh. was going to do at least, is if it landed on something like Hannibal that was on the list, I was just going to say Eden of the East. <laughs> that's what we agreed upon. And now that's But luckily, it naturally landed on Gravity Falls. It, it, it knew somehow. It's like, okay, you're depressed. Here, I'll give you something to cheer you up. Oh, uh, thank God. So <laughs> I'm so happy it landed on that. Oh, man. Yeah. But... Uh, now let's... Spin the wheel. Hold on. You need to do the thing. I'll do the thing faster. Fuck you. <laughs> ha, you don't have leverage like I did. Oh, shit. Spin the wheel. Ooh. What'd we get? Seeking a friend for the end of the world. Ooh. Another Sweet. movie neither of us have seen, and this one doesn't. This one wasn't recommended by anything for me, at least. I just thought it sounded interesting. Yeah, seeking a friend for the end of the world. Awesome! I'm excited. I is too. Hooray! So that'll be the next one. Okay. All right. So thanks everybody for watching this episode of Cinemaret. Don't forget to tune in next week for Gravity Falls. The first five episodes. First five episodes. I think we're going. With. Yeah. Um, are they Honestly, like, wanted to do four episodes are they like 20 minutes. minutes each or are they like short, like adventure time? Cause adventure times is only like 15 minutes each. Uh, they're 20 minutes. Are they 20 minutes? Each. Okay, cool. Yeah. If they were shorter then we would, then we could probably do 10 and then finish it in four weeks. Yeah. But yeah, we'll do the well, first one. If we only want to so. do four, then we can do, uh, 10 weeks of gravity falls. Yes. 
I'm good. I think we'll do the half of that. So <laughs> I'd be down for a month of Gravity Falls. This show's great. <laughs> Gravity Falls month where we travel to Gravity Falls, Oregon. <laughs> Everything weird happens there. Anyway, we'll get to that next time. See. You. All right. See you guys next time. Woohoo! See you guys next. Time. <laughs>